Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Thronebreaker: The Witcher Tales. Where, uh, well, our next task is to help out the dwarves, help out the clans, so we can. Uh, I've come to the conclusion your elder in chief is not get the favor of Hoover. Fond? That's near the quarter of it. He hates them with seething passion. But you're damned lucky. Why is that? Legend, didn't he? Mahakam was cordoned off completely through the outside world for many a long year. Clans finally forced Bruva to at least let in peddlers and emissaries. <laughs> he dragged his feet as long as he could. Okay, so it's a good thing that he even let us enter, which is interesting. So we're on the ice right now. And we're heading towards Boro's Rump, which is uh, an interesting name. I'm actually going to check out the map for a second because I have no idea where to go and this seems like a pretty open space. Okay, so there's a battle on the west side here. And then this seems to be a dead end, so let's head towards that battle first. And see how our new uh, adjustments are going along with the deck. Uh, more resources and we have another Shalemar apparently. Well, more monsters is uh, more resources. Here we go. So let's clear them out to Shalemar's lair. Elder Hoog once instructed his secretary, Chromek, to prepare a list of all the caves, caverns and grottos in Mahakam. None ever learned why such information had become a priority for the Elder in Chief. Perhaps Bruver needed a record for a highly secretive task. Or perhaps he had simply fallen into a sour mood and wished to bring the secretary down with him. In any case, the, cons the census of Mahakam's underground caverns was never completed, for Gromak had disappeared without a trace. None ever discovered his true fate, yet the bones that continue to pile up and gather dust at the threshold of Mahakam's darkest caves serve well enough to spark one's imagination. An egg transforms into his best, uh, best outfit, of course. And let's start with a drummer. Left. Right and left foot right. Um, blitz unit up top. There we go, just a sightman up top. That should be enough. And the shale mark is going crazy. I haven't checked. Oh, this time he has an ability. Gigantic shale mark. Every two turns on turn start, give a random unit four armor. On round end, units with armor gain resilience. So that means we should probably keep them on this turns and spawn one harpy egg. That will spawn a harpy. That might actually keep going. Because of my uh, Manticore trophy. Uh, first things first, let's use the Regiment Drummer and put uh, Sightman down. And because of our abilities, we that was a Blitz unit, so now we get another Ever unit as well. Sling it. Um, and, and that's basically it, so... Oh no, I need to actually use... Okay, if I would have known that, that would have... Yeah, never mind, we get that back with Ake anyway. And then, so that the armor is down, which is good. And then we get another war wagon. You can try to win them all, but you won't. And then the, hmm. The forager should probably go over here. Oh, be ashamed to let this beauty go to waste. And then we can give another charge to the forager. And just fire up the forager twice. There we go. Oh, there's zoo six damage now, great. There we go. And there goes another one. I think he's gonna pass. There spawn more more harpies. I could take out all those harpies if I want to. Every turn, on turn starts. Increase a counter by one and damage a random enemy by two. That wish multiply this unit's counter by three and damage a unit by that amount. Okay, so with the sapper, should be able to do a lot of damage. So one, two, then the harpy eggs. Ah, that doesn't trigger yet. Okay, I was hoping that would trigger, and then the harpy to get rid of the armor. You know what, let's just put the grey riders up top. Because I feel like he's gonna pass in a second anyway. There we go. It's not a complete loop. Since the... Yeah, there we go. Okay. Let's just pause. 
I feel like I've played out a lot of my cards already, but that's not a problem. Because that upgraded drummer is really, really powerful. And there they all go, because none of them has... Res oh, that one did have resilience. Interesting. But I think I might be able to just keep going. So, first up, the Grey Rider. I live to serve you. So I put him up top for a reason, of course. To have him uh, in full advantage. And we have another Harpy that, yeah, just going to keep going. Um, how many damage did we get? Four by now. That's not... Because I've... Uh, I've seen in my recording what Isabel actually does. So the, she does heal. Uh, she boosts actually your entire total by the total damage you've taken. But it's just spread out and the UI doesn't properly display it. They all just go plus one, but it's actually higher than that. So if, for example, we, we would have taken 40 damage during this uh, match, she would be able to boost our total amount by 40, which is why she's extremely powerful. Now, the drummer. Again. Again, again. And then we can use Meave to pull one of the Sightmen up top. Because I want to pull everything during this round. So uh, there we go. Like Sightmen up top. And end the turn. Yeah, you know what? Gabor oh, and Voldemort's Pocket. So play a trinket from your deck. I have one left, which is the Bone Talisman. And there we go. Why? Why did that do that? So it destroyed my Grey Rider. Interesting, but not what I really wanted. Let's end the turn. It did boost my units to an ungodly amount. Don't know why, but it did. Oh, fighting frost to each enemy row. Interesting, but I'm going to keep going. Because that's going to come in really handy. That extra damage that we're going to get. Both for Isbel and for Ake. Let's just use also Thunder on the Harpy. There we go. And end the turn. Consume the three lowest units. Okay. Didn't do all that much. Did get damaged a bit by the Biting Frost, but that's just fine, I feel like. Let's just play Gascon, because I don't feel like I'm going to have much use from him. Nothing personal, I assure you. Then activate the Forager. And get us to 66 and 6 and reduce the amount of uh, targets we have. Use me if to just pull... Uh, the Grey Rider in front. Because I want to have him on the next turn. Because I'm actually going to pass, I think. Some more fork tails, and they keep going and keep damaging me, but Egg gets boosted by that as well. There we go, let's pass. Because we're running low on cards compared to him as well. And we get more and more stuff. He do get he does get units with resilience there. Ooh, damage a random enemy by two if it's under biting frost, damage it by four. But it's still not enough. He's gonna have to play out his cards to uh, beat us here. Another fork tail. And more harpies. Still not enough. We lose. Ah, there we go. Now he's. Now he has plenty of uh, plenty of damage on there. But Egg has gone to 39, so I don't think we're gonna lose this. And those actually all stay on the board. That is interesting. But we get another drummer, which is perfect. And then I'm just going to see if I can replace this with something else. Yeah, the field medic. A random ally from our graveyard. Sounds, sounds great. So another harpy. Those keep going. And keep damaging, of course. Then the grey rider first. Hesitation. Get me Warhammer to boost whatever I still have. I don't really know. Lyrian Hashtooks, but I should get the Blitz unit up front. Yeah, there we go. End the turn. Another Slizzard, so that's good for the damage buildup. Then the Drummer. Um, a waste of time for one like me. There we go. End the turn. We're gonna play this in turbo a bit. Because I feel like I can do this. 
We get damaged all the while. Then we can play the field medic down here. Gets you boosted by tree. And then we have a, a flip and light infantry unit. Can't okay, fair anymore. enough. That's being resurrected. Then we can use the Dürmer, get the Sightman, and I think that's a Bomber. A yeah. a time to sow. So set that row on fire. And that's boosted as well. Down. We still have one charge with Raynard as well. But I need to remember to put Isbel on the field before we do anything else. So, first up, Isbel is a 76. So much anger and she gets and boosted suffering. because of the Grey Rider. What? Then Meave Warhammer to boost. Ah! Is there a Blitz unit on these? No. So probably the Lyrian Harshduke, right? One charge to the card on the right. Gonna have to remember that. Charge on the right. So, and the turn. Let's hope they stay away from Isbel. They do. And now we can just play this out. Because, uh... First up. Isbel. Heal everybody. And look at that. That was... Yeah. 92 we're at. Which is... Wow. Just wow. Uh, then we can use Reynard to... Redo all that. Exceptional. Get... Um... Hmm... Get the drummer to pull the Hushduk. The Hushduk gives the drummer another charge. Uh, pointy and upwards. There right. we go. And then end the turn. The damage keeps going, which is great. Then we can use... You know what? Let's just use Egg right now. Egg over here to get advantage from... Our codex commands it. The Grey Rider. There we go. And then end the turn. Then use Meave to pull the other Hushduk out. We're almost through every single card in our deck. Regiment Drummer. Life a once. Now here I'm marching Regiment Drummer with the Forager. I'm actually going to put the Forager over here. Use, use the Lyrian Horn. And then use the Forager. Boom! And oh wait, I have his bell as well. Oh my god, 294. There we go. I think we crushed that Shailmar. And with that, I feel like we should change the deck a little bit. We actually get boosted a lot like that. So I think the Lyrian Merlot should be back in the deck. People of the Hills, we hereby order 5 barrels of cured beef, 40 links of juniper sausage, 5 sides of pork, 10 dozen goose eggs, 20 sacks of rye flour, and a payment issued in gold. Warning! Goods must be tightly packed so as not to attract nonces. We bear no responsibility for accidents, Elder Vavrinek of Clan Farang. So yeah, they didn't listen to that. And uh, this might be the avatar for Kapoor? No, ooh. That's a fancy border. Gonna equip that. Uh, let's check out the deck really quickly. So swap that the Bone Talisman for the Lyrian Merlot. And then we have another report or letter. The guest rule book. Dear guest, to make your stay in Mahakam a merry one that doesn't end with you rolling down a cliff in a barrel, do us all a favor and stick to these rules written by me, Elder in Chief Proofer Hoog. Don't go sticking your nose in others' affairs. You fondle it, you buy it. Don't question our laws. Get out as quickly as you can. Don't bother me. Okay, those are stupid rules, but uh, yeah. That's that. Moving on, we cleared out our first monster nest, which is uh, commendable, I feel like. Oh, there's a fishing dwarf over here. I want to talk to him first. Wench, wench. Wench, wench. Yes, we did. Duval <laughs> Duval yeah, he's just cursing now. Okay, let's just get this. I'm moving on. And there's actually stuff beneath the ice here. My queen, there are bodies of dwarven miners trapped beneath the ice sheet, likely swallowed by the river. It's too late for them now, but their equipment is recoverable. Though bear in mind, should any fall in, they'd freeze to death in the blink of an eye. It's a risk I'm willing to take. Our men 
have our men recover the gear. So we lose two soldiers, two recruits, but we uh, get gold wood, which is really important, and one bit of a card. So there we go. Ooh, it's the spoiled ale. The the bad the bad ale. That's that's going to be interesting. That usually does a large amount of damage in Gwent itself. The expired ale, but might be something else in here. It seems to be another human over here as well. Demanding a pretty sum, but their steel's worthy of any crown. No offense meant. The Rivian blades don't hold a candle to their Mahakaman cousins. Their elders just a tad eccentric. So he's just uh, a traitor, I suppose. Yeah, okay, so nothing useful from him. Let's go up here, because this seems to be a little village. Barrow Hill, and we have a puzzle battle. And a lot of resources. So let's check out the notice board first. So a puzzle battle, oh, two puzzle battles. So each uh, in their own separate mine. So let's clear them out one by one. First puzzle battle is this one over here. Do, 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 do the depths of Miria. Mahakam is not unlike an iceberg. What's visible on the surface is but a tiny fraction of the whole. In order to truly grasp the enormity of the Dwarven realm, one must venture beneath the earth, traverse miles-long passages, peer into chasms that seem to stretch into eternity. Before long, foreigners can begin to lose all sense of time and space. The mine shafts appear identical, one after another, as if reflected in a mirror fashioned from mountain crystal. Use your leader's ability, hint, look into the eye of your foe. What separates you is but only a mirror. Ooh, interesting. Okay. That is gonna take some explaining to do. Okay, so they don't have any abilities. Perhaps these can be arranged in a specific pattern. And we have a runestone of the void which cannot be played, but... The biggest difference... We don't have a difference. So we have the same amount of cards on each side, so I suppose we need to arrange our cards as they are over there. And our leader ability... Choose a stone and swap it with the stone on its left. If there is none, move it to the rightmost place on the other row. So we're looking at a mirror. Our board is mirrored compared to the other side. So choose a stone and swap it with a stone on its left. So this is pretty simple then, I feel like. So if we use Meef... Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, so we need to change it on the other side. Do we need to change this completely? Oh, a mirror. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So we need to swap the green one to the other side so this one to the rightmost place on the other side then this one yeah yeah so now the blue one there we go then yeah then the orange one yes so we're starting to see the same pattern, and then that one. Then move the blue one and the red one over here. And then swap them. There we go. So we just had to arrange them in a mirror composition. So that was pretty doable. Okay. Nice bit of a change in puzzle. The Zoria runestone. Wait a second. We came, we came out the other end. That's not... Okay, then. That was weird. So I'm gonna check out the runestone in a second. Just wanna check this out. How is this possible? Madness. Pure madness. Everywhere looks exactly the same. How am I supposed to remember? So many corridors, shafts, and chambers have to keep moving. And then what? I don't remember. Tre treasure? But what kind? So yeah, a lot of dwarves must have gotten stuck in there. Let's check out the card. So it is our third runestone, and there are supposed to be five. Damage all enemies by three. Interesting. So it's like the Lyrian Horn, but more damaging. Do you feel like the Lyrian Horn is stronger just because we get healed as well? We get boosted as well. So I'm going to keep it that way. So the rest of Barrow Hill didn't really contain much aside from a bit of resources. So uh, we'll just be moving along across this bridge. And there seems to be another human merchant here. Your Majesty, a human traveler, he's offered to sell us a treasure map. Says he sought it out once, but got caught in a blizzard and now fears a return to the mountains. Yet he swears by the gods, 
Should we follow it exactly? We shall uncover untold riches. Okay, we'll buy it. So that... Is that where we came from? It doesn't seem like it. There's like... There's not enough detail for that, I feel like. Let's go down here first. Lonely Rock. There seems to be another settlement, so let's uh, raid it for resources, obviously. There is actually... Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna wait. Let's check this out first. Meave noted a Draktar. Dwarves. They were several dozen, many holding baskets brimming with dried sausages, soft, puffy pretzels and jugs of frothy beer. What is this gathering? She asked Gabor. These folk? They're the parents of youngsters who are to return today from the Drek thing. Gabor proceeded to explain that the Drekthag was a trek upon which the local dwarves would embark when they reached maturity. During this year-long voyage, young folk would taste of life beyond their home. Yet if they failed to return on time, they would be stripped of all rights and privileges accorded to Mahakam's natives. See, in recent years, young folk's blood's been boiling on account of the strict laws in force here. Gabor added. So, we send them out. Let them taste life in the lowlands. Once they've learned for themselves what it's like to live among humans, they come back and ain't likely to complain. Customarily, only a few dwarves ever decided to remain in the valleys for good. That year, however, was different. Deadline's the Mora. And 40 Drekthagers still have not returned. Their parents now worried if some misfortune had not befallen them. The Mahakaman Guard had sent out patrols to the near reaches of the valleys, they returned, not having seen anything distressing, while the humans living at the foot of the massif had been largely unwilling to talk. Okay. That does not sound good. The guard captain, a dwarf with a fiery red beard, removed his helmet, wiped the sweat from his brow, and addressed Meave. Your Majesty, we need to find our youth. Perhaps you'd be willing to go out and search. Human folk are more like to tell you if they saw anything out of the ordinary of late. That naturally, there'd be something in it for you too. No, of course, even without compensation. Uh, let's search for the missing dwarves. One could say I myself have lost a son. Meave gripped the captain's hand firmly. And I know well the pain that comes. I shall do all in my might to spare you at least that. Meave set off, the hopeful gazes of the dwarven parents bidding her farewell. The queen sent a scout ahead. Sometime later, she heard his horn. Three blasts, two short, one long. An ambush! Meave expected to combat beasts or robbers. Yet upon her force descended warriors with squirrel tails attached yeah, to their helmets. Yeah, the squirrel tail. I had my suspicions. So that means that the dwarves just joined the squirrel tail in that year. Here we go. The missing drag taggers. Neve was prepared for clashes with brigands, monsters, and elf guardians, but Squiatel, in the high mountains near the very gates of Mahakam? What did they seek? The Queen did not know, yet one conclusion seemed clear. At the very least, they sought her head on a pike. So a standard battle, we're gonna be in this for the long run again. But I feel confident in our new deck. Squiatel! Don't let them escape! Okay. That is weird that there's Squiatel in this place. Spawn Biting Frosts on both enemy rows. Okay, I don't have a way of clearing that yet. And the Squiatel Tracker damage an enemy by 5 and its adjacent units by 2. Okay. Okay. This might hurt. But let's not give up just yet. Let's start with the drummer. Army's wasted time for one and use Meave's ability to put something nice up top. So, our drummer is not looking good, which is uh, definitely not good. But uh, let's start by boosting the bugger. Let's just first use him. We get the war wagon. And, ah, okay, that's a confirmation that it only happens once. Um, let's put the, the Sightman over there, lattes. and then use the Lyrian Hajduk to west, repeat the right, process, uh, and get, now? ooh, again two units out of our deck, which is nice. The, the medic is sad, because we don't have anything in the graveyard, so pretty useless at the moment. Right, come on! So, on third end, boost out by one and fighting Frost is on the enemy row. We get, we just lost our first one over there, which is interesting. 
So they're gonna die automatically because of the biting frosts. But that's not gonna stop me though. Let's actually use the forager to put him over here and make him a bit... Although, do I need to make him stronger? Yeah, ju let's just do that. Let's just use the forager to get one of those light infantry units and end the turn. And then we get a pass already. Okay, so I feel like I made the right choice there. But they get damaged a bit and those guys have resilience. So if I can't take them out, you know what? I can take them out in the next turn as well. Uh, so let's pause. So we did get pretty much everything with charges that we can have. So let's just use the drummer again. Left, use the same tactics right, and left, use me Warhammer right. to put ah! another blitz unit up top feel like yeah the war wagon is gonna do fine so let's end the turn we have a second drummer to fill the gaps if needs be oh, so she can heal an ally but i don't really care and they won't actually damage me so that's fine so let's use the regiment drummer which gets us egg and the war wagon hungry like a wolf i am and an egg, Prepare which is not going to do damage, of course. Any honor. Then we can use Xavier Fear not. We and shall boost the drummer twice. Get a slinger. Huh. That's actually good. There we go. And we boost egg with that as well. And three times five damage. We take out the healer even. Uh, six damage. Kind of forgot about that. They're upgraded. They're upgraded. And then end the turn. Should have probably used my drummer. Kind of forgot us. about that. Whenever a non-elf unit is destroyed. Blah, 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 blah. Let's use the drummer. Again and again and again. And hold off for one more. You know what? I'm going to use it. There we go. The Grey Rider. As you command. Only benefits from that. So a good on them. So next up, I think I'm going to pull the other Grey Rider and just keep uh, bouncing now them up we and down. See who is weak. He won't be able to damage me yet. I can use Meave to check out. Okay, so the Grey Rider is close. So I should just use the Regiment Drummer and put the Grey Rider That's here. That works. And that apparently doesn't move. A different ally, so yeah, that doesn't count as a Grey Rider. Damage. Um, give a charge to the card on the right. So we go. Already, we? Another charge for the Grey Rider. Then the Forager. What am I going to do with the Forager? Um, let's put him over here for now. So I can use him a few this? times. There we go. That boosts those two Neophytes. But hey. The rest were benefits. And I think we can use all those thunders to kill off. Ooh, ah, damn it. That damage just stuck in my throat there. But yeah, we lost one of our drummers. Um, we're not in fear of losing another one. So I'm gonna just take the risk of just losing more units. But I feel like we can deal with that. So, all those thunder down there. Taking care of that guy. That, that, those are Spoiatel units, right? A non-elf unit. Okay, so those are dwarves, so yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. I understand. Spoiatel, attack! What did we just lose? Wait, did we just lose? Wait, what? Destroy the lowest damaged enemy unit. That was Egg. He just killed Egg in one go. Does that count as damage? No, it doesn't. Interesting. Um, let's use Beef Warhammer to get... What are Blitz units? Which ones are still Blitz units? So that's... Yeah, the Bomber is a Blitz unit. Then use... Uh, gas Corn. Yeah, put it over there. Nothing personal, I assure you. And boost them twice and the movements will help him out as well. And then we can end the turn. That is powerful. Yep, Egg just went down. 
in one fell swoop. Ah, they used to tire my tongue about that. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that's my own fault. That is definitely my own fault. Um, let's give charges. Company, forward march! So that gives charges to those guys. We get the bomber Watch your heads. on the back row. And then the Rivian Sapper, which won't do much. In the mort. There we oh, go. Then we just damage whatever we want to. There we go. Then we can use the Forager to get Rainer and that one. Use Xavier to get the Forager another charge. And end the turn. I don't think... Yeah, so we still have the Commander's Delirian Horn if you want to. Definitely gonna do that. Everything all right. Don't start damage adjacent units by six if any were destroyed. Move to the other side of the battlefield. Fuck. So I could either damage that thing by ten to finish up my. I'm gonna do that. You should finish up that. my play here because damage unit by ten if it was destroyed deal any damage remaining damage to something else. But yeah, there we go. And then we can do the forager again. And we get a 90 unit, which will allow us to use to boost ourselves by 90 again with the Lyrian Merlot. And that should be enough. That should be enough, we said. It should definitely be enough to finish off this oh, battle against us, Quartal. So, Lyrian Merlot. There we go. 98. And I don't know why I'm doing this, but let's just use Beef again. There we go. And pass. We should have this, I think. I would be surprised if he makes up for 150 points with one card. There are no damage units. And he should have done that first, probably. No wonder they were easily manipulated. So Isbel chimes in there. But as soon now as the battle had come to an end, the prisoners were brought before the Queen. All, without exception, were dwarves. And all looked to be youthful dwarves. Mystery solved. Muttered Meave. In fact, these were the missing Drekthagers. Instead of returning home, they had enlisted with guerrillas fighting for non-human rights. But what had prompted so drastic a decision? Yeah, probably because they saw how dwarves were dealt with uh, in the, the lowlands. I was impatient. Wanted badly to turn 50. I couldn't wait to see human cities. Vitsima, Tretigo, Novigrad. Said one of the dwarven prisoners while pressing a bandage to a bleeding wound. And you know the welcome that awaited me there? I was spit upon and called names. I saw ghettos, massacres. And how was I to go back to the mines after that? We must fight while we still can. Before the humans come to cut us down, we must tell the rest of ours the same. Pull all Maha come into the fight. Meave's soldiers stood waiting for her to protest, to accuse the Dwarf of lying. But the Queen could not pretend she did not understand why the Dwarf had taken up arms. Without entering into a discussion, she ordered the prisoners taken to be tried and judged by their kin and elders. Indeed, a wise decision. We don't even need to take it. The Dwarven it. parents thus got their offspring returned to them, albeit wounded and in chains. Bruva Hoog, who had limitless disdain for the Scoyatel, demanded the Dwarven youth be severely punished for succumbing to the rebels' seductive ideals. In the end, the Drekthagers were sentenced to fifty years' hard labor in the quarries. The Elder-in-Chief believed a half-century of swinging a pickaxe would sufficiently cool the hot heads of these would-be guerrilla fighters. They came back alive. That's the key part, the red-headed captain said, handing me the pouch as a reward. And wow. perchance, by the time they're freed, the war twixt the races will be over, eh? What do you think, Queen? Meave shrugged in response. Perhaps she had no opinion in the matter, or perhaps she simply did not wish to state it aloud. Yeah, indeed, because she's afraid of what her soldiers would do. No decision there to be made. That was interesting. 
We made our decision by going to check out the lowlands, so that is interesting. Might be in jail, but at least they're back. That's most important. Yeah, a harsh punishment, but apparently... Yeah, that's actually... We never see dwarven women, but this one seems to have a mustache and a beard. Might be in jail, but at least they're back. That... Yeah, it's a harsh punishment, but at least they're alive. So that's basically the premise there. And with that, I'm going to take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And uh, thanks enormously for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next episode of Thronebreakers. Thronebreakers? Just, just one Thronebreaker. Thronebreaker, the Witcher Tales. Goodbye.